Hello, my name is Tom Android, and my persuasive speech today is in defense of the Affordable Care Act. Mahatma Gandhi once said, a nation's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. The United States, like many other nations, has a history of inequality, but in 2011 took steps to establish a more equal society through the passage of the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act made health care coverage for all citizens mandatory. The ACA has improved society by providing coverage, insurance coverage to millions who were previously uninsured, therefore lowering the number of people forced into poverty by unpaid medical bills, limiting lifetime limits on insurance coverage, and moving the U.S. towards a more equal society. There are some negative aspects to the ACA, including increased cost, less choice, and even decreased coverage in some cases. Though there are definite drawbacks, the ACA has had an overall positive impact on, on American society and it should not be repealed by our next president. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare as it is nicknamed after the president who presided over its passage, is a law passed in 2013. The law has had many stipulations, but the essence is that all Americans will have to purchase health insurance coverage or be fined. To provide this coverage, states were directed to create exchanges or marketplaces for insurers to provide clear summaries of their plans for customers to choose from. The ACA is the last and only successful offering in a line of attempted American health care reforms. The ACA succeeded in providing insurance to millions who were previously uninsured, as you can see here. And if you look here on this slide, you have the uninsured rate from 1963 to 2014, starting here in 1960, all the way up to second quarter of 2014, which was right here is when the ACA first open enrollment was. Healthcare costs are the number one cause of bankruptcy in the U.S., according to a study by NerdWallet Health, which analyzed data from the CDC, the U.S. Census, the federal court system, and the Commonwealth Fund. In 2013, 2 million people were affected by bankruptcies due to unpaid medical bills. Even people with health insurance are often unable to pay their medical bills. Some catastrophic but very common conditions, including cancer or heart attack, can result in bills in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, well out of reach of the Amer average American salary of $50,000. Many more people go without needed prescription medications or preventative treatments, resulting in higher health care costs later on. By mandating insurance coverage for all, the ACA prevents these catastrophic events from ruining fi families financially. Another problem with the U.S. health care system prior to the ACA was lifetime limits on coverage. This allowed an insurance company to set an arbitrary amount it was willing to pay for treatment of a given condition over an individual's lifetime. If the cost of treatment exceeded that maximum, the patient had to either pay out of pocket or stop treatment, essentially come up with the money or die. Clearly, this is a horrible choice to have to make, and the ACA limited those lim eliminated those limits and in doing so allowed patients to continue receiving care without having to choose between paying their living expenses and medical care. Another way the ACA has improved American society is to move us toward a nation of more equal opportunity for all. Our country was founded as a reaction to the privilege and inherited wealth and titles conferred on people at birth. Though the implementation is not perfect, the ideal of the United States is that each individual will succeed or fail on his own merits, not succeed because of his own parents' successes, nor fail because of parents' failures. Studies show that healthcare and nutrition in the first five years of life have a lifelong impact on a student's success in school. If all children do not have access to the healthcare, including nutrition they need, we can hardly say that we are a nation where people succeed on their own. After all, these children are being disadvantaged, probably permanently, by their parents' financial situations. The ACA has many critics. And while many objections are politically motivated, some are valid. A frequent concern is the increased cost of insurance, insurance coverage for all. 
However, unless your goal is to not spend money on anything ever, healthcare needs to be a priority if we wish to remain a productive society. On an individual level, some people find their employer provided insurance plans are now more expensive than they were prior to the ACA. While again, it is always more expensive to buy something than it is simply not to buy it, this is a huge concern. U.S. wages in recent years have not been rising nearly as fast as expenses and most families can scarcely afford to pay more for health care. However, repealing the ACA is not the appropriate solution in this case. Rather, we should continue to work with government, medical providers, and insurance companies to work to find ways to lower its costs for all involved. It would be a mistake to undo all the good results of the ACA because of a bump in the road. I'm in no way saying that the ACA has been a perfect solution to the problems in American health care. There are very legitimate drawbacks to the law itself and its implementation. However, in crafting social policy moving forward, we as Americans need to decide who we are as a nation want to be. A shining beacon to the world, a place where everyone has the opportunity to achieve their full potential from an equal starting point, or a place where some are disadvantaged because they're even born, or if they are a member of their family happens to suffer an illness they can't afford. I prefer the former. Thank you.